Good morning, everybody. Today we're gonna be delivering our load of reels back here. Gonna drop them off in Edmonton, Alberta. And then we have a reload in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan, about five hours back. That's gonna take us down to Minnesota. Everything looks good on the truck. Uh, it's about, well, I'd say minus 15 Celsius outside. Let's just double check that. Minus 12 Celsius. What is minus 12 Celsius in Fahrenheit? Minus 12 degrees Celsius is 10.4 degrees Fahrenheit. There you go. So I've had my truck shut off now for about seven and a half hours. I'm gonna let it warm up now for the next half hour. Let's see how she starts. I've had my engine heater running for two hours. So the engine water temperature is sitting at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Should have no problem. It's gonna be a long day, again. That's okay. The plan is to cross back into the US, probably at Portal, North Dakota, from North Portal, Saskatchewan. I have to confirm that yet, but if that's the case, I should get close to Weyburn tonight if everything works out perfectly. But I do have to unload and reload, which takes time out of my day. I have a 16 hour clock here in Canada where I have to get all my work done, because after 16 hours, regardless, I have to stop. But I can drive 13 hours within that 16. I won't be able to cross into the US tonight. I'll have to stop for my 10 consecutive hours before crossing into the US tomorrow. <clears throat> And in the US, you have to get all your work done within 14 hours. And you can only drive 11 hours in 14. You can't get quite as far. But that's okay. If we can get close to the border tonight, tomorrow we should be able to get down into Minnesota to deliver. What's the matter? Maybe deliver the next day in the morning. Then we'll have a reload. Head back home after that. That's the plan for this week. But plans change. We'll see. I might be headed home from here. Uh, let's take care of one thing at a time. Let's go get these reels off my trailer. They've been weighing me down. I don't want them anymore. I want to give them away. Everything's ready. Everything's set. Are we ready to go? You bet. Double check my trailer there. Trailer brakes engage. Trailer won't fall off. Trailer brakes disengage. Very nice. This Petro Pass on a hill, what I call it, is just down the road from Innisfail, Alberta. Or is Innisfail? Innisfil? Innisfil? Just up, further up the hill, there is the town. It's about 1,200 kilometers from Winnipeg. How much is that in miles? Well, 600 miles is about 1,000 kilometers. So we're probably looking at 1,100 miles. No, not 1,100, 700 miles. Somewhere in there, my best guesstimate. Achoo! Woo! Excuse me. In 100 meters, turn left on 53 Street, Highway 870, and then turn right into 160 meters. You got it, Karen. We're gonna have a good day, right? Right? Karen? Fine, suit yourself. I'm gonna have a good day. Best part of the day is always getting out onto the highway after the truck's all warmed up, ready to go, starting the day. That is, it's always the best part for me. So you'll see my e-log there is only giving me 11 hours, 57 minutes to drive, beginning of my day. Usually I'd have 13. That's because I drove past midnight in central time. I can only drive 13 hours, 
from midnight to midnight at my home terminal time zone. So within 24 hours, I'm only allowed to drive 13. So even if I stop for my break, 13 hours, that's the maximum. Whereas in the US, as long as you stop for your 10, right, you can have your 11. Even if you drive more than 11 in a 24 hour period, as long as you have your break. They like to keep us confused. How are they gonna give us tickets if we understand everything? getting old blue back on the highway warm her up a little bit cleaning up my equipment here. I'm gonna throw it in its box. And we're gonna get these reels off of here and I can get out of here. So I've got my longer chains on my driver's side, my shorter chains on my passenger side. Just be a little organized. have a second row up there I can hang more chains but I use that for my bungees and this is an old mud flap bungees are supposed to be on this side of the mud flap so that they don't keep hooking into my chains in there that's annoying Rack needs a good polish. I'm hoping to find a good polisher in Winnipeg or the surrounding area that'll polish my whole truck in spring. Do you guys know anybody? I want the wheels, tanks, uh, headache rack, stacks, everything polished. All at once if possible. Who would you tell me, uh, who would you recommend in the Winnipeg area or Steinbach area or Winkler, Southern Manitoba? Do you know anyone? I got work for him this spring. So if you know any good place to take my, where I can take my truck in the spring, maybe email me if you feel like it. Uh, email me at truckerjoshvlogs at gmail.com. Maybe you own a polishing business. Like I know PBX in town, uh, where I'm from, they polish wheels, but I'd like to get everything polished. Everything that's chrome on my truck, I want polished. Especially the, the tanks and the headache rack. Uh, those are the two uh, unique ones, I guess. Wheels are a little bit easier. Uh, and they're a little different than doing the tanks and headache rack, but if I could take my truck somewhere just to get it all done That would be great. So uh, We'll see what we can find. Maybe you guys can help me find a good company that'll do that for me For a good price. I'm looking to probably get it done well, I'm gonna be on paternal leave mid-march to like mid-april end of April so If we can get it done like beginning of April 
or beginning of May. April or May. Maybe May, because April you still get some snow and some bad weather. Beginning or mid-May 2023, I'd like to get this truck fully polished. Anybody want my business? Anybody want my money out there? We're on the Alberta side of Lloydminster. About to head north from here towards Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. The border with Saskatchewan is just uh, the next set of lights after these. I often stop at Lloydminster at the Walmart or any of these stores along the the side here. And I usually go and park behind Walmart or Home Depot or something, right? I've noticed a distinctly Lloydminster activity. Or a behavior, I should say. A distinctly Lloydminster behavior. People in Lloydminster seem to think that the back lanes behind the box stores, like behind Home Depot, behind Walmart, are through streets. Busy, non-stop traffic going behind Walmart, behind Home Depot, behind Best Buy. And it's like they have to go out of their way to go around the back of the store when there's a road right in front of the store, there's another road in front of that, and another road that runs parallel in front of that. There's three options out in front, but they decide to go all the way around to the back. And it's not just a few, it's a ton of people. Like the back lanes here in Lloydminster are busy places and they're dark, right? Because they're not lit properly. So you gotta be careful that these cars see you when you're walking from your truck. Because they'll fly down there and just car after car after... Anyone from Lloydminster watching right now, why is this a thing? Why, why is Lloydminster so back alley happy? Those, those aren't through streets, you know? You know, those, uh, those are back lanes. But hey, they like to use them, so figured I'd just point that out and maybe on the off chance someone from Lloyd is watching. I'd like to know why this is a distinctly Lloyd behavior. Like, I only see that in this town, ever. Or at least this bad. Apparently I'm driving right along the time zone boundary. Changing time zone. <laughs> and I keep bouncing back and forth between mountain time and central time. The left side of the street is Alberta. The right side is Saskatchewan. We're driving right down the, the time boundary. Change in time zone. Figure it Change out, Karen. Time zone. Figure it out. This guy's getting loaded in front of me. And I'm next. Time is 826 Central Time or local time here. They uh they load until 10 p.m. So we got here with plenty of time. I mean, you don't want to show up right at 10 o'clock either, or like 15 minutes too. That's just rude. But they, they go home at 10 o'clock. So if you show up at like five minutes too, well now they've got to stay late and they're already staying till 10 p.m., which is already awesome, right? So if you're not gonna be here before 9.30, well, it's up to you. I don't know, that's just my standards. That's what I follow. 8.30 is plenty of time. That guy can get loaded and then I'll get loaded. It's just lumber, super simple. He'll have me all loaded up in like probably 10 minutes. This guy's just tying down. So as soon as, as soon as he's done tying his load down, he's gonna come around there in his loader and tell me to pull in where he is. Get this loaded up. Then we head to Wadena, Minnesota, which is in like the Detroit Lakes, Brainerd area, Bemidji area, like central Minnesota. I believe it's 1,500 kilometers from here, or about 1,000 miles. Let's see, Wadena. Wadena, Wadena? Wadena, Wadena, whatever. Wadena, Minnesota. Directions from here, let's see. Google, speak to me, you wise one. Oh, wise one, speak to me. Okay, so we'll cross, like I said, from Portal, Saskatchewan or North Portal, Saskatchewan, into Portal, North Dakota. Snake our way down to the I-94, 
take that eastbound all the way into Minnesota. And uh, yeah, that is right in the Brainerd area of Minnesota, north of Alexandria. It's 1,539 kilometers, so almost exactly a thousand miles, a little bit under. I have another about five hours or so available to me to drive today yet. Four hours, 55 minutes. And uh, we'll do the rest tomorrow. I don't know if I'll fully make it tomorrow. I probably, it's gonna be very close, full day tomorrow. I might make it, but there's a lot of two lane road through North Dakota, so we might just make it close, like maybe to Fargo, or is that Grand Forks or Fargo? Might just make it to Fargo and then do the rest on uh, the following day. I don't have to be there till the following day anyways, first come, first serve, whenever I get there. It's just the sooner I get there, the sooner I get unloaded. The sooner I get unloaded, the sooner I get my reload. The sooner I get my reload, the sooner I go load my reload. The sooner I load my reload, the sooner I go home. You follow? It's all about getting home as fast as possible. Old Blue needs a service. He needs a little bit of attention. There's my load. Have I showed you my new load lamps yet? Thanks to RC Man on YouTube. He sent them through to me. Got them installed now. Nice and bright. So while he's loading me, the sign right in front of me says no foot traffic while loading. I'm assuming that means no walking around. I mean, like on your feet. Usually while he's loading me, uh, well, in, in a lot of places, while you get loaded, you can sort of tie it down while they're loading you. In some places, they're very strict about it. You stay in your truck until they're done loading you, and then you tie it down, which is smarter. You don't want to get run over by their tractor, and he loads me up pretty quick. Like, look at him. He's got another one there. So he can just give her. Not worry about running me over. Once he's done, I'll quickly jump out and uh, <clears throat> jump out, throw a few straps over it, and we'll be out of here in probably like 20 minutes. Super fast. Look at that, he's got another one. No messing around with this guy. Employee of the month right there. He's almost got me loaded already. Those are the new load lamps. Nice and bright. Someone was asking me about the side fairing here. They thought that it was, uh, I showed a picture on Facebook and they're asking if it came out. It does a little bit, it's for aerodynamics. Just the side fairing, it's bolted on up there and it comes around back there. That's how that works. What do you think, bright enough? Oh, yeah, it says bright enough. Got a nice little purple spot there now. And here we shall lie thine head. Mine head. Thine would be your head. Well, that was a fail at some old English. <laughs> I'm tired. About midnight, uh, we stopped in Radisson, Saskatchewan. Got a spot way in the back here. They haven't plowed the snow very well. I had to walk out, like get out and walk around to see if this was actually a spot. I'll show you maybe in tomorrow's vlog in the morning when there's daylight outside, but see, right beside me, there's this huge area that they didn't clear, but it's parking lot. They just didn't clear that area there. But they cleared this little area like where me and this guy beside me are. It's strange. It'll make sense if you watch tomorrow's video. Whatever, I'm comfortable parked here. I got a safe spot to park. I'm running out of hours. I didn't want to risk going all the way to Saskatoon. Oh, first, excuse me. First of all, I'm tired. Second of all, it's foggy outside. You can't really see it because uh, we're stopped. But once you get out on the highway, it's pretty thick. And it's uh, it was actually so thick that it was building up a layer of ice on my air breathers and on my grill in the front. There was like half an inch of ice 
on my grill. When I got here, I had to like break it off so that my engine could breathe or so that my rad could breathe. It would it would have melted off on its own while I'm parked here, but yeah, I was like, wow. It's just like this thick layer of ice building up. My windshield was constantly getting like coated in ice. I figure, you know what? Radisson. Sounds good to me. I'm gonna park here for the night. So tomorrow, I have uh, a ways to go. How far do we got? Karen. Karen, show me. Yeah, arrival time, total trip. 1,298 kilometers, so 1,300 kilometers yet. One second, I'm working on it. What is 1,300 kilometers in miles? 1,300 kilometers is equal to 807.783 miles. So I got 800 miles or so to do. We're not gonna get that all done tomorrow. We'll maybe get 600 done tomorrow and we'll do the rest. Maybe 650 done tomorrow. Get the rest done the next day. So thanks for hanging out with me today. Another day is done. Another safe day of driving. We uh, made about 900 kilometers today. Uh, a little under 600 miles, 580 miles or so, give or take. Tomorrow's gonna be a good day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell button so you don't miss a video of mine. And if you hit the like button, uh, it really helps me with the algorithm. If you really hated my video, uh, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. I'll see you tomorrow.